Be me. Enter in some whatever tabletop role-playing game server on Discord. Not a good start, I know. Want to GM some games because free time and also to find some good players. It's like searching a nail in the middle of a haystack. Can't GM on the server. The fuck? You have to fill a Google report or some stupid thing, like a test. Okay, fine, whatever. Fuck four oh my God. <laughs> fucking four pages long questionnaire. I mean, like at the same time, like this does sound horrible and all, but, but there is a lot of crazy people on Discord. Yeah, and I understand. I get the I, questionnaire. I, 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 I get, get it. it. But four like, pages. I, I, I'm sure most people have came across some genuine mentals. So you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I would be like, oh no, this sounds really bad, but at the same it. time, I, I, get, I get it, yeah. Actually kind of good. Ask some good questions and what you would do with them. Did it. No problems. Owner of the server DMs me. Okay, Anon, I'm interested. First time that a girl says this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, beast, that makes I guess. it even more <laughs> sus that the owner of a D&D server's a girl. Yeah, you don't really get many. No. Well, you do, actually. I, th- I think, like, you know, when it comes to... Most. Yeah, but the owner of the server is a girl. Yeah, I've never come I've across. never came across that yeah. on a D&D server. The, I would say, generally speaking, a fifth, I would say, of most servers mm-hmm. would be female. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be a one R one shot. Excuse me, miss. I think, uh, and it needs to be Call of Cthulhu 7th or D&D 5th edition. Why are we still here? Yeah. <laughs> Just, Just to suffer. suffer. <laughs> I can't feel my legs while I and my try- arms. <laughs> while I try not to puke, I suggest using other systems. Fuck 5th edition and Call of Cthulhu is good, but 1R? Jesus. Try to be polite and suggest other systems that are more simple to such a short one-shot. She's like, okay, I guess. Next day, aka today, I DM her. Talk about the system that I was going to use. Explain the premise, the basics, the whole shebang. It's really easy. Oh, the other evaluator will talk to you. So, remember that I was going to GM for two evaluators? The other one is her boyfriend. Oh god, kill me please. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch ass starts to say that, Oh, but D&D or Call of Cthulhu is better because blah blah blah, we know the system a lot. And also, the best one? That I still don't even know how to react. Simpler systems are nice, yeah. But not for more technical and serious campaigning. Wait, what? Wait, what? what? Alright, okay, we'll wait till the end and then we'll <sighs> talk about this. Are you out of your mind, mister? Only plays 5th edition or Call of Cthulhu. Suggests a fucking 1R one shot. Talking about a technical and serious campaigning. So you're saying that the main thing that you guys evaluate is knowing these two systems instead of, you know, improvising, providing fun, teaching new things incentivizing problem solving sharing the spotlight between players you know actual gm virtues but 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 you still need to shoot your skills with complex rules <laughs> yeah bitch so let me at least gm a fucking complex system with more time they're basically a couple that likes to play their favorite systems and want some games with this assessment bullshit i i've no idea that where that sounds this is. And put stars beside my fucking. <laughs> this sounds fucking toxic. Yeah. Toxic. Get the fuck. I, I don't know. That's just it's really bizarre. If I be honest with you, I don't get the whole concept of it. Cause like, okay, guys, like, just to put it out there, I do enjoy fifth edition. I like fifth edition. A lot of people on TG absolutely despise fifth edition. They say it's dumbed down. It's too easy. And like, you know, yeah, they've got their points. You know, what I mean, there are valid arguments against it. Uh huh. And these people are like, oh wait, no, uh, fifth edition is very complex, and like you know, no, it, no. I, don't, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I just don't get this at all. But like you know, like it is what it is. But why are these people like this? Can anyone uh, help me try to? No. Yeah, actually, we always try and do this. We, we, we try, try and we try and reason with people and work out <laughs> why are they like this. Why are they but... like this? And then it's just like, why are they like this? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on. Hey guys. Do you like models in your tabletop role-playing games? Because we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Because we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties. We got lizard bitties. We got orc bitties, oni bitties, cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. 
the gang commits tax fraud. I'm a seasoned GM. Let's say that that Beardian knows me well. This is Garbo. <laughs> yeah, it's Garbo. I was thinking, it's like, will we try and, like, you know, get you guys work out who it is? No, well, let me just say, after this post, somebody wrote, is this fucking Garbro? This reeks of Garbro fuckery. So yeah. people know them. <laughs> yeah. So look, let's get into this one, will we? Party I'm GMing for are in 5th edition Homebrew. I don't lawyer races, so they pick their fancy. Female dragonborn magic caster. Female satyr ranger. Male Asimar cleric. Male human fighter. And a female Serbian rogue. My custom race. <laughs> Just picture uh, Sjekublia. I, I can't say it, guys. Sjekublia. Sjekublia. I, I can never say Cat it either. People. So pretty much Pluto field writers. Yeah. Like, I think early field Early writers. field writers, yeah. yeah. Game starts with them as orc prisoners. They finally get loose from the holding pin, find their shit, and make their way to escape. Wander around for a bit before finding another ruined human village inhabited by orcs. Party almost wipes when attempting to steal chickens and pisses off a rooster. <laughs> Is that what they nearly got wiped by? <laughs> a rooster? <laughs> you know, like, to be fair, I remember I was on the phone to Garbo one day and uh, someone like the front tried to steal his chickens. Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember that? I remember that. Yeah. Cedar Ranger befriends a hen, then knits her hat. Cute. Oh. Party gets spotted by kids and ducks inside of a house that's inhabited by Orc McHuman Person. McHuman Person is super into humans. Party dubs him Human Boo. <laughs> God's sake. <laughs> Humor boo? Okay. McHuman person is also big on collecting cheese and is more than happy to help the party for a fee. McHuman person wants a human wife and party agrees to try and set him up. McHuman person performs the role of slave driver and pushes the party north towards a large human citadel settlement. Party's first combat is fighting against bandits who see an easy score. Cleric panics and whips his dick out to try and intimidate his captors despite having a bag over his head and hands partially tied. (laughs) (laughs) Runs, bounces off a tree, falls face and dick first into the forest floor. Bandits believe the cleric is mentally handicapped and feel bad about trying to kidnap him. <laughs> to be honest with you, most NPC- NPCs should be thinking. <laughs> yeah. Vast majority of player characters are handicapped, let's be serious, guys. Just wash their hands of him and book it after hearing their partners doing the same. Party succeeds, gets some minor loot, heads to town. Human fighter, after Party finds an inn, wingmans for McHuman person and starting buying drinks for any human willing to humour him. There was a lot of... Yeah. <laughs> it was almost like a lumber, but not. <laughs> yeah. Humans are just coming off of a hot war with the orcs, so it's a hard task. McHuman person is getting turned down left and right, but finally a female elf seems game to get free drinks just to talk to an orc. Human fighter thinks it's a good gateway fate for McHuman person and runs off to buy him an in-room. McHuman person and Elf are smashed. McHuman person is actually charming when hammered and seals the deal. Both go off to their room. Serbian rogue finds a chess mimic holding site. Gets into a fist fight with a rather pissed off mimic, but befriends one that was trying to help her out during combat. Wait, you can befriend mimics? Uh, apparently. Hi. In Garbo's games. <laughs> <laughs> Party finds a terminal home. Magic door. Finds an injured Serbian trapped in a dungeon Roomba. <laughs> Kill the cube. Figure out combination for time. Drop her off at hospital. Party drinks around town until they think McHuman person is done doing the deed. Go up to his room to give him kudos. Except McHuman person is fucking dead and torn apart as if a vampire had gotten to him. Cedar recognises that this looks like a werewolf attack. And sure enough, it's full moon outside that had just started to rise. They tell the innkeeper... Innkeeper walks up and goes, Ah, shit. I don't have werewolf insurance. Just wear badgers and wear <laughs> Is this a thing? Do you guys ever have that? Do you guys have, like, like adventuring guild insurance policies? <laughs> Is this a thing in most people's <laughs> I don't know. games? I don't know. Yeah. Party collectively what? Innkeeper fills them in on the area's wear problem and that the wear badgers and wear sabers are the most common. Werewolves, not so much. Innkeeper tells him that he has to contact the Werebeast Assault and Repayment Office as soon as possible <laughs> and ask them if they can make the room like it was a werebadger attack. I'll split the money with you. Party 
though sad, is all about that cash. Party runs off, gathers some organs from a cadaver. Were-badgers don't touch certain organs while werewolves do. Does a bit of carpentry and have to mark up McHuman person's body a bit with the correct scratch patterns. War official. <laughs> <laughs> Werewolf. Oh, no. Werewolf assault and repayment office shows up. <laughs> Little portly halfling and starts going about his business filing the report. Finds a few odd things, like a set of ovaries in McHuman person. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> But he's not an expert on orc's organs, so he shrugs it off. Orc males could have ovaries. The fuck does he know? Halfling finds the scene in line to a werebadger attack, thanks to the party's work. Toddles off to file report. Innkeeper breathes easy and thanks party, then sends off for a cleanup crew. Party rests in the room next door for the night. Next morning, they're given substantial cash and all split to go buy stuff they need. Dragonborn needs a spellcasting tool. Shopkeeper has a rather fancy one, but wants her to buy the thing at a great price if she buys this creepy haversack some weirdo warlock left behind on accident. She agrees. Thing is full of tongues and labelled jars. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, fucking hell. Does her spell to summon a familiar. Wants a fey one. Fey takes a stolen kid and throws him in the way of the spell. The kid is almost a hundred or so years old and is warped with fey magic. The Fae were pissed that people kept taking their kin and have these kids stored away just for when this bullshit happens. Dragonborn isn't happy, but the kid is snarky and she enjoys it somewhat. Seder goes for a spa day, gets her hooves did and painted, <laughs> hair cut and new dress, gets a pair of solid hoof shoes, feels good man. <laughs> Human fighter is pissed and is just drinking with the mimic. <laughs> He's still with the mimic. Well, like the, mimic like the mimic's not that bad of a fella, you know? Asimar is looking after the Serbian at the local hospital. Serbian dipped out somewhere, hasn't been seen since. Asimar gets shaken down for money in order to pay for the Serbian's medical bills and shell out half of their fraud money to keep her alive. Standard gold, let's be serious. Yeah. Next day, they find her dead anyway and Dragonborn figures out she's been poisoned. Party is confused. Takes blood to a local vampire to find out what toxin it is. Party then defends a group of Serbians getting targeted by rival gangs. Party gets involved in gang war. Party is now getting paid by Serbian gang to infiltrate other gangs. Party finds the warehouse the gang is at. No fucking windows, one door. Highly suspect. Why do all the buildings look like this? Uh huh. See, any time, it's, it's always, oh yeah, there's no windows, guys. It's just like one little door. <laughs> yeah. There's one back passage or there's one. Wherever. And it's one of those like we it's slidey bits and you just see the eyes. Yeah, it's like that's right. <laughs> yeah. Try to get inside. Fail. Dragonborn wants to buy Mar, the kid, some snacks. Goes to a bakery. Cashier woman hits on the Asmar. Asks him on the date. He agrees because he wants that sweet human puss puss. <laughs> Gargo, why, why do you insist on so why many wifeys? He asked to add at least so one. So many wifeys. He's like, if it doesn't have at least one wifey a session, what's the point? Top 10 camera list, Garbo <laughs> at the top. He's always at the top. Yeah. To be fair, at least Garbo still makes it wholesome. Yeah. Somewhat. <laughs> Somewhat wholesome. Party is unnerved and give him shit for being a horn dog. Asmar goes in for the crotch kill for the night. Crotch kill. Oh my god. Party retires to the inn to sleep. Next morning, Dragonborn is trying out the tongues. Oh, right, the tongues. I wondered what the fuck. <laughs> Sadar just wants to drink and play songs, entertains children with her music, and even starts making money. Meanwhile, Asmar wakes up and realizes he fucked a goddamn were person. Oh, God. She's open about it, says she drinks potions to keep it under control. These potions are readily available and well known in the city, supported by the war office. <laughs> Asimar asks why his friend died to one then. Kula, the werewolf, has no idea, but the potions have been known to randomly fail without warning, but rarely. So he then lets drop the bottles all come from around one place, the enemy gang's warehouse. Asimar tells Party, Party preparing to get in that warehouse, and just see what the fuck is up. Asimar learns about Kola's friend, shut in, accidentally turned due to one of the failed potions and mauled a guy. Decided to buy some book to deliver to her. A cheese history book. <laughs> wait, 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 is it... Okay. And a book with a very well-endowed dragonborn in the cover. Accompanied by a man that can only be described as a very hairy Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> 
Party finds him on the street. So what you doing? Nothing. Party follows an attempt to drag him back to the warehouse. Power walk. Jog. Sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Asimar rolls athletics to stop in front of the house. Passes. Human fighter passes. Dragonborn? Not so lucky. Slams into Asimar, busting the door down into pieces. Shut in. Very scared and upset. Guarding herself with a butter knife as three strangers try to explain why they just stampeded through her door. Her door that was enchanted specifically to be reinforced against another potionless werewolf rampage. Dragonborn wipes her bloody nose as she explains the Asimar fertility cleric's intentions to inseminate her. <laughs> this stinks of garbage fuckery at its finest. Yeah, it fucking does. <laughs> it fucking does. Like, you just tell when it's garbage stuff, you As- know? Asimar porking his way through werewolf wifeys, yeah. Yeah, sounds about right. But look, at least Garbu's not a complete... No, he is a complete. Is he? Yeah, he is. say so. <laughs> yeah. Let us know down below. We're going to put a straw up poll because we know he's going to see this video. So, uh, yeah, you vote He's going to vote himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to put the straw up poll then. So let us know your thoughts down below. Yeah? Well, this uh, this video was supposed to be a thread, but uh, it kind of turned into Gar Booster, yeah. and I didn't it, just because of the length it came into. But yeah, no, I like that one. That was a fun one, and we haven't yeah. done one of Gar Booster stories in a long time. He yeah. does his own ones now, so like, if you want any more stuff, like, don't ask me about veal letters because I don't personally know what what he's doing with the veal letters. Yeah, and I don't but know about his Emily Blunt series. Go, go over either. and check out his channel. His stories are really fucking yeah, good, and he checks all them himself. Yeah. Yeah, we're really, he's a really yeah. good author. He's a really good writer. Just it's, uh, they, they're fun, check. and also you guys know the old skeleton party. Like, yeah, know, I was heading to the DM and that. So definitely go ahead and check that one out if you haven't. Yeah, the links will point. be down below to check out where you can find him. Yeah, and down below there's going to be links to our website for our models and oh, T-shirts wait, and actually, subclasses. Oh, forget um, yesterday's video or the day before. So we got a warden on our channel. So we did. We've got a secondary channel now. This is only an emergency thing, just in case something happens. We did get a warning from a video but, from like 2008 yeah you, you know what YouTube 18. overlords yeah like. exactly you know you guys know what YouTube's like so if you could go ahead and like subscribe watch the video to give us a watch time so we can monetize yeah. the channel and uh, hit the bell notification on it just because if anything does happen <clears> on the <throat> channel we won't be able to let you guys know but if you're notified on the other channel you'll yeah. find out so but yes. that's just a backup that's just in case and I don't think we hopefully hopefully we fingers never crossed have to use them. Hit subscribe on both channels, hit notification bell on both channels, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!